Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Laura Stranks, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Um, welcome to my video today. Uh, it's Monday the 6th of February, 9am Queensland time. Um, that's one month gone already. Time's flying fast. I not long ago had a quick holiday and over Christmas. Um, I'll get straight into it today because it's got a fair bit of um, work involved. Well, not work, but um, there's a lot of pieces to cut for this card. It's called a Floating Gatefold Double Pop-Up Card. Um, it's one of my favourites. You will need, I think it measures five and a half inches. Yes, it's five and a half. So you can get um, envelopes that are five and a half by five and a half. Or you can get a 6x6 six six, which fits comfortably in if you've got a bit of bulk in it. And I'll just open this one. This is my sample card, which I'm happy the way it turned out. I used the Hues of Happiness um, DSP in this one. And I fussy cut all, not fussy cut, die cut all the flowers that are on it. Um, and this one on the belly band at the front. Um, the main colour I've chosen is Night of Navy, which is my base, and then it's Pool Party in the um, mats, and then just a variety of patterns in the DSP. Um, and I just put that little strip on the back as well. Uh, it's not too difficult to do, but and I have got a PDF typed up for you um, with pictures of how all the pieces fit together. Um, if you decide to make one, it's probably best to watch a small section of the video where it's just these um, the floating arms, um, these floating this floating mechanism has to go on a certain way. So I'll just show you that. I'll just put that one aside. As usual, I've prepped all my pieces, um, and I'll go through them with you. I've typed up. Um, all the, instead of putting all my post-it notes on like I normally do um, the one I'm doing today is in the it's a free celebration product in the uh, little catalogue here it's called Dainty Flowers um, really pretty paper I've got quite a few packs of it now um, and that's the patterns I'm using today in this along with Starry Sky for my base and Fresh Freesia uh, Fresh Freesia is my, is my main base and then Starry Sky for my mats. Um, all the colours are listed in the, in the paper so you can coordinate it quite nicely. But that's in that little celebration catalogue. Now I've typed up um, this and I can go through the pieces um, with you so you know what I'm talking about. There's been a few... Um, videos around showing this card, the Fancy Fold card. Um, the one I've chosen, I can't remember the name of the lady, but it's in inches, which I prefer inches. I've had a couple of ladies inquire why I use inches. It's just what I'm used to. My generation, um, I was brought up with inches. So that's what I prefer. I can do centimetres if I do get a centimetre one. that I, It's right, easier to do it in centimetres than convert back to inches. Um, this lady had already done the conversion for it and also the mechanism piece she's done it in one piece and I'll show you from step one how to do the mechanism piece so my base and I've scored this one already it's 11 inches by five and a half and I'm scoring and I'll put I'll get my um, trimmer out so I can show you the scoring it is two and three quarters and there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Two and three quarters, which is there, um, score. Then you can, on, on the measurements that I've done up, you go put your, the um, arm out on the trimmer and you go across to eight and a quarter, which is over there, and you can score there. The other way you can do it, if you like it, if you're not sure whether it's going to be exactly even, if you haven't cut this length, to exact measurements you don't want it folding when you fold it across the center you don't want these overlapping at the center so the way to get around that is score at two and three quarters first 
flip it around 180 degrees and score at another two and three quarters. That way, if you have got a little bit of excess um, on your length, it will it will stay in the center of the card and not on the edges. So we'll just put that aside. We will need the trimmer again in a minute. Uh, and I can fold this and burnish. Let's get my bone folder. I'll go through all the other pieces straight off. And as you can see, that's um, sitting nicely in the centre there. It's not overlapping at all. So that's my base. Um, my front inside mats are, and I've adhered these down so you don't have to watch me um, do them again. I've got two for my front. These are my front ones. Now, if you've got directional paper, I'd suggest you cut your long, cut it this way first and then cut it up the middle so that when you put it together, as you can see, my patterns are lining up down the center so that when you separate it here, I did it the same here, that um, whole flower is there. So this one will be the same, that flower. It's just with the split down the middle but they line up like that. If you use non-directional, which is that's my inside pattern, then you don't need to worry about um, lining it up. But um, cut your length this way first. So that would the, the mats on this, the DSP, sorry, um, is five and one eighth. So if you cut your five and one eighth length first out of a long strip and then cut two, two and three eighth pieces. And that way you can line up your pattern. The mats on this are Starry Sky. They and you'll need four of them. Put that one back over there, which are the backs of all of these, the two inside and the two fronts. Um, they're five and three eighths by two and five eighths. And I've adhered all those down with some my multi-purpose glue. Um, the inside centre. Now there's two of these ones in the middle. In here, which I've decorated with the flowers and one is on the back and they measure five and one eighth by five and one eighth. This one here is my back one which I've just put a, a matching piece of DSP on that and the inside one I stamped. Um, I will show you all the stamp sets in a minute that I used. I used this one here out of the Dainty Delight. This um, stamp set and dies go match up with this um, DSP so I'd, and then I coloured those with the blends I used the light fresh freesia and the light um, starry sky and some old olive in the, in the inks and the blends on those I just decorated that a little bit different so that's that stamp set then um, We've got the DSP strip on the back of that white one. Uh, it's one inch, this one here, one inch by five and one eighth. You can make that whatever width you like. I chose a wider width so you haven't got a big blank space there. It sort of stands out a little bit more. The floating squares, which we're going to do this piece here, and I'll show you this in a minute. Um, it's six and a quarter by two and a half but after we've scored and there is a pencil line I need to put on it we're going to cut it in half that way all your score lines are exactly lined up you could do it at two one and a quarter inch pieces two strips separate um, six and a quarter long but then you're scoring twice um, scoring on each piece and also if your score marks not exactly right then they're not going to line up so you want them nice and even so this way, um, do it at two and a half inches wide and after you've scored, um, then cut it in half. My belly band, or we'll go back to that one. My belly band, and there is another trick to this one. This is 12 inches long. You do need a 12 inch long piece. Um, I did have a 12 by 12 sheet of Fresh Freesia, so I used that. If you haven't got 12 by 12, because you're going to wrap it around, the and I had a piece of oh, here. Um, this is a normal A4, and I'll show you. You can see it's the 12 by 12 is longer than 
the standard A4 cardstock. It's that much longer. So you could use an A4 piece, cut it to whatever width you need. Um, this is one inch wide. Uh, I think it was one inch. Yes, one inch. And then just um, when you wrap it around, just get another small, because it'll only come to about there if you've used A4. Um, just And the join is at the front. So when you do it, just cut another piece, probably two inches long, and slot it over the top of that. That way you can still use your A4 cardstock without having to have a 12 by 12 sheet of um, cardstock. Just cut another small piece in the center and um, I have when I've joined mine together I've used tear and tape so because it's got a lot of movement going up and down on your card so just make sure you put tear and tape on your join if you're using an extra little piece on that that's how you get away with that then um, we'll move that out of the road my decoration for this I've just done there in this um, something fancy dies there's all these lovely frame dies um, I've used this three lot in the center here uh, and I've also used this one on the inside I'll show you those in a minute but I've used the three of these I've used fresh freesia for my back piece I cut a little um, there are some dies in this one or is it no it's in the other one no it's in this one this one here, I've just cut three of those in the three different colours, the white, starry sky and fresh freesia. So I've cut three of those and just laid them up at the back of that. Then I've got, um, I'm going to dimension all this up, which I've already put those on. That's going to sit up in the centre. That's the second layer of the frame dies. And then I've put a, the third size is just a piece of DSP. Um, just pick a pattern that's going to show um, the effects of the paper on the front that's that also to cover across this is my other belly band so this piece that's across the center here after you've joined it together that's that piece there um, it's starry sky five and a quarter by three quarters and the DSP is five by half an inch you can use um, whatever DSP you like you don't have to match up um, the patterns that you've, you you could use a different pattern on the front I chose that because it's opposite to what's going to be on the front of the card and scrap card stock for my decoration which is I've just done this little celebrate because the inside I've got happy birthday and a few other greeting things on it so this one I'm just going to put it flat on the front there just so it's got some sort of wording on the front that's that um, this is my, we'll go back to this piece, that was the belly band. Um, back up here, the floating squares, these are starry sky. They measure, and you need two of these, they're two and a half by two and a half. I'll stick those down in a sec. Um, and they will go on there, which is the DSP, which is two of two and a quarter by two and a quarter. So both of those will go on there. Um, it doesn't really matter that these patterns don't line up because one's here and one's here. So they're not sort of lining up with each other. That's those two. We'll get to those in a minute. And then I've chosen these little um, greetings for a very happy birthday. That came out of this one here. For a very happy birthday this is a beautiful beautifully happy it's in the new mini catalog as well or oh, it might be in the starts no, it's, it's a, yes it's a celebration one uh, and then the best is yet to come is in i've chosen quite a few oh the let's celebrate from the front is from sentimental park um that's in the mini catalog and the best is yet to come, I think, was out of this one. No, it's not out of that one. It's out of the Dainty Delight. The best is yet to come. So that's that little one there. They're all sort of cursive sort of writing, so they went nicely together. And I've stamped them in 
starry sky they will just sit flat on there I didn't want bulk on the inside so everything's going to be flat on the inside put those aside don't lose them that is all the pieces that you'll need that seems a lot but once you cut everything it's not too bad to put together um, now our mechanism and I'll just get my trimmer again there's a couple of steps to this and you will need a pencil so as I mentioned this one is six and a quarter by two and a half so on the long side we're going to score at one and a quarter and remember it's score try not to cut one and a quarter four and three eighths which is one two which is two marks before the half if you're in on the inches four and three eighths and five and a half which is over there then if you go back and I've done this separate you could do it as you go um, you'll need a pencil which I've got here and you line up your edge at two inches this is just a guide and you don't need to rub the pencil mark out because the the mats going to go over the top of it at the two inch mark just put your pencil in the track and draw a line down like so that didn't quite go right through probably need a sharper pencil that's better um, so that's that one there now because we're going to cut it in half you'll have both pieces marked and scored um, all in one go so we will need the trimmer again and because it's two and a half wide we're going to cut it at one and a quarter line it up nice and straight and cut and that gives you your two mechanism pieces then you can fold on all those score lines fold them down inwards and this one as well now we'll put together all the other pieces first before we need to um, adhere all these onto the card base before you put the mechanism on because the mechanism goes over the top this one will go in here and I'll get my silicon mat wherever I put it not sure where I put it there it is put that aside and I'm going to use Tombow because I want a little bit of wiggle room so I can get them nice and straight doesn't need a lot there's a little tiny bit come out of there quite muggy here today I put a load a couple of loads of washing out this morning and it's overcast but it's quite muggy so that one will go in there you can put a mat around this if you wish um, this has got the an eighth of an inch border all the way around actually I think it's a quarter because there's no mat on this piece I thought it was thick enough without and it still looks nice without a mat um, then we've got these four we'll put the back piece on as well do that first make sure you get all your patterns up the right way and that will center in the back there love these colors then back to the inside which is these two in here you'll see when you get to putting all the bits together the colors go quite nicely together I do like a dark matte against a light color um, DSP or background so this one will have the a little one sixteenth border all the way around that other is one eighth inch all the way around this is a sixteenth 
because you've got the mat and it sits quite nicely with that little border. Last week's video, if anyone watched, it was a fairly quick video. It was just a couple of little gift boxes for Valentine's Day, which is coming up shortly. I'm doing a market stall just before then, so I've got to get in and do a few Valentine cards. Now the front pieces, I'm making sure that my patterns line up, which is that way. Trying to be as quick as I can. So I knew this one would take a little bit longer to do today. But bear with me. You'll be glad you watched when we get to the end. Um, I've got a group that where all my PDFs um, are stored in the file section. All the videos that I do. Um, after the video has gone up, I upload the PDF into the files section of the, it's called Laura's Craft Room Tips and Tutorials. So if you want to join that, that's that one there. Um, feel free to join, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, if you're not, haven't subscribed to my video but you're watching, please hit the subscribe button, that's free as well. Um, and if you hit the little bell, um, you'll be notified when I go live. You can watch all my videos. I do have another group page. It's a Facebook page. It's called Cards by Laura. Um, there are lots of cards in there. No PDFs. They're um, just cards that I've made and projects that I've made. I do sell my cards. Um, thinking of doing another market stall this year so I need to get in and make lots of cards usually my cards used to just sit there and now I feel that I've got to keep making more and more to sell I did get an order from a lady the other day for a card a special card for a 50th birthday and it turned out quite nice I'm hoping she's happy with it she hasn't got it yet but she'll get it soon and these are the two little um, floating mechanisms. They go on top of the floating mechanism. So just put those together. And then the little greeting that's going on the front. I'm leaving them all flat because it needs to close comfortably. Doesn't matter which way these goes. And I did notice, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, with that die... It's not perfectly uh, eight sides or six sides. Um, this side here and this side here line up and the other two line up. It's not, as you can see there, it's not a perfect um, shape. I didn't notice it until a couple of times I'd cut it and I thought, oh, that's not, that looks odd. But it suits nice with the set. The little greeting I've got for the front is out of the same set as well. Goes nicely with just tiny greetings. So that's those two done. We'll leave the belly band for a minute. Now, into this piece. What you need to do, we'll put these on first. We need tear and tape on all of these, so I can put that aside and I'll put the top of my glue. My tear and tape is here. Tear and tape, this pencil line and this score line here, that's where your, um, when you, after you've cut these, I'll go back a bit, back a step. When you cut these, you need to mirror image them. So you turn one, 180 degrees across so your pencil line will be on this side on this one and this side on this one Because this piece here is going to get hit here down to the flip of the card as same as this one here But we need tear and tape in the center and I'm using tear and tape because this 
gets a bit of a workout opening and closing. I'll just, I usually use the top of my Tombow to cut, but I'll use my scissors today. Just a couple of strips across there to hold that. You could use Tombow on this center piece. But the edge pieces, you will need tear and tape or red tape if, if you still have the red tape. Um, maybe the stamp, the seal plus would work as well. I've tried the seal plus on a few things and I wasn't that happy with it. It seemed to tear up the cardstock. Um, it didn't work well enough for me and I do love my tear and tape. I use a lot of tear and tape for especially boxes and 3D projects where they get a bit of a workout opening and closing. So that's those three in the centre. Now all the tear and tape goes on the same side. Now where the pencil mark is, which is that side and that side, this longer edge here, we're going to go on the edges, we're going to turn it and go this way. So this is the wider piece here on the end. We'll put a couple of strips out there. I'll do three again because on my I did a template one the other day and I noticed it didn't hold that well just doing two strips. So we'll put three on there. If you could get that first one close to but not on the score line and also up this end which is the little tab end it'll take two strips across there I, probably, uh, I wanted to show you the cutting of all this and scoring so that's why I didn't do it ahead of time I probably could have done a second one and the same on this one this is the smaller end just make sure you mirror image these when you put them on the card Once you get these on, it's um, not much left to do. Just the belly band. And then three pieces up this end. Don't worry about rubbing out that pencil line because it's not going to show. You're going to put the, the um, floating piece over the top of the pencil line or on it at, at least so, and you won't see it. It's just a guide. There is another step you can put a pencil line on the halfway mark up, up and down on the horizontal but um, I prefer to just eyeball it. Now I'm going to run all over those with my bone folder so that they're nice and stuck down. Now we need this and oh no, we need this first. So just work out which way you want your greetings. So that one is going to be the top and this one will be the bottom. Um, I'm going to put that up there. The best is yet to come for a very happy birthday. That's the order that I'm putting them in. Um, so we're just going to take the backing off one. And hopefully I'll use the grid lines on my um, on my grid paper here, the lines on my grid paper to sort of line this up straight. So you want that with this um, edge just covering that um, just covering the pencil line and you need it even top and bottom here. And if you put that line up your the bottom of I hope I'm in view here. Line up the bottom there and then just gently hold it, making sure it's centered without touching too much. Just cover that pencil line and making sure that it's straight along the bottom. You can put a little pencil mark halfway there and halfway there and line up your pencil marks this way, um, but I prefer to just eyeball it. I think it's reasonably straight and then the same with this one take the backs off these when I did my sample one this one yesterday um, I did struggle with getting the mechanism the right way 
just so that it closed if you don't do it the right way so that's straight if you line it up straight down those lines those grid lines um, you're pretty much even just eyeball it top and bottom and I think that's pretty straight so that's that now we'll do the bottom one first I don't know why just we do I do <laughs> um, this one here so what you're going to do you're going to line up I'll move that one aside a bit line up this along this bottom edge and with it opened out flat so you can still see your tear and tape that edge there is going to go just inside that score line of this um, flat piece here you want it so that when you put when 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 it's closed it's going to close if you put it there it's going to buckle up um, buckle up um, Keep it even on the bottom of bottom edge of the card here and just inside that score line, not too far across. So it's got room, just practice before you take the backing off, just move it so it's freely closing. Just a little fraction across. And you can hold it there while you take your tear and tape off. Just go a little bit fraction more. I think it just needs more um, burnishing on that. So then you can take these pieces off. Just do this side first. The next part's the only tricky bit. And then close that shut. And that will, it attaches over that side. As you can see this one here, it's attached over that side. And this is the one I kept getting wrong yesterday. So with it out flat, um like that then all you do is uh, no we know this way no we go this way <laughs> this way yep it's that way so fold that in half so it's pretty much in half this this center score line is the halfway mark I'll just burnish that a little bit more. So fold it in half and go to the back. Take your tear and tape off. I'm just making sure I get it correct. I don't want to be showing you the wrong thing. Then you're going to pull this across and close it shut. Pretty sure that's right. So that with that folded under, or is it? Yes, that folded under. I'll be annoyed if I get it wrong again. And then just make sure that closes shut. So you know it's going to shut when you pull it open. Stick that down. That's correct. So just fold the whole thing in half. I'll show you again with the top piece. And that will close shut. If you don't get this one in the right spot, this will not close. So then we'll do the top. So you're in the reverse here, the wider pieces over here. We, oh, we won't take, we'll line this up first. Now this doesn't open, be careful when you're opening this because it doesn't open right up. So what you need to do, what I should have done was not put the center this center piece down do the two side pieces first that way you can open it up you don't want this fully open so i've lined that up with that top edge there and down this score line here which is going to let me close it take the tops off those and close that shut So I would suggest doing these two pieces first, <clears throat> these two sections first, so you can lay it out flat and then do these two centre pieces next. So then we're going to fold this in half like this. Take the tops off. Now 
I hope I've explained it clearly. Just keep rewinding the video. And this you're just going to pull right across so it's flat. Line it, make sure it's lined up with the top edge and just push it down flat. And that worked. Yay! And that still closes. So there's your card. But yes, do do the two outside ones that attach to the outside panels. Do them both together and then do the inside ones next. That way you haven't got to worry about it because it doesn't open fully. It That's as far as it will open. Otherwise, if you pull it right down, these are going to come unstuck or this will come unstuck. So do that. Then we've got our belly band, which I've cracked pretty much all. And as usual, don't um, wrap your belly band too tight, otherwise you won't get it on and off. So just sort of eyeball centre, and it will cross over a little. I don't score it or anything, I just fold it. Line it up on the grid paper. And it will sit about there. And we're going to put some tear and tape on that as well. Mine's cut and tape because I don't tear. If I if I sometimes I use the lid of my Tombow, which I've done before. I will show you how I do that. Just on this little piece. If you're doing multiple um, strips of DSP, like we did on the other pieces inside um, all I do is I'm right-handed so I've got the the um, tape in my right hand I use the lid of my Tombow here and I just go flick like that and it takes it off saves you picking your scissors up and down you can keep your Tombow lid in your hand so that's that one now I'll just take the backs off these and when you pull it together, just don't pull it tight. You don't want it too loose that it's going to flop around. So I pull it tight and then I just ease it back a fraction. So you know it's going to fit and line up your edges so it's nice and... And that's going to slide nicely up and down. So the joins at the front. Then we've got this piece here, which I'm going to put on with tear and tape so it doesn't lift. Tear and tape on everything. I'll use my lid. A couple of strips of that. Sometimes if you use Tombow and you don't get the edges, it starts to lift up. Hope everyone's still with me. And that will go on the top of that. It sits nice and even on the sides. With an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Then this one here. What I did do with the back of this, I've glued them on. And then I did a cover over because those stems were really fine. I thought they might lift up. Um, so I put another, just a little rectangle piece over the top this will come up on actually I'll put this on first I'm just going to glue this on flat because I've got a layer of dimensionals and the um, the belly band's quite thick already so I'm just going to put that up there I don't want to cover too much of the flowers We'll see the flowers underneath. Take the backs off those. You can decorate your front however you like. Um, your choice with greetings and whatever. Actually, the whole card, <coughs> you choose your DSP. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I find when I'm making a card, um, I choose my DSP first, whatever colour I want. Um, doesn't matter about which pattern, but well, it does if, if it's got a lot of different colours. But 
I ch always choose my DSP first. I'm just going to put a strip, couple of strips of this in the centre to hold this on. Uh, then I go and choose, if I've got mats, I'll choose the mat. So I try and get a dark colour mat <clears throat> to go against a light, um, a light base DSP. And then I'll choose a light main colour that'll go against the dark. Um, that's how I've always done my, when I choose to do a card. Um, if you're not using DSP, just coordinate two colours. Or if you've got mats and, and a base, just coordinate your two colours. And then do your stamping accordingly. So that one will go on there. I didn't get any embellishments out, but I'll put them on later. I'll put a few embellishments the same as this one. Um, there are some nice pastel pearls that will go nicely with that. So I'll put them on later. And that is it. I hope that wasn't too difficult for you to comprehend. I'm sure you'll get it right. And that's it for me today. I'm not sure how long that took, but hopefully it's not too long for you. And that's the inside of my card. I really do like that one. It'll be for someone special for their birthday. Have a lovely week and I shall catch you all again next week. And thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.